Hi, it's Rume. Welcome to the third and final part of this tutorial series. We are going to implement and improve your blood splash effect. If you haven't watched the first two parts, the links are in the description. I've started a new project using the first person preset, and I selected the Arena shooter variant. Then, I simply migrated the Niagara effect we created into this new project. Let's begin by implementing the effect in the game. Go to Variant Shooter, Blueprint, Pickups, Projectiles, and open the BP First Person Projectiles Blueprint. Right after the Impulse node, I'm adding a spawn system at location node, because I want to spawn the effect when I shoot the wobble targets. Now, I just need to select the effect, set the locations and the rotation. For the locations, it's simple, just use the hit location vector. For the rotation, it's a bit trickier. Since we have a vector but need a rotator, we will use the node make rot from hex. And that's it. The effect is now implemented. Let's test it by clicking play. As you can see, the effect is only activated when projectiles hit the wobble target. But the effect is looping. That's normal for now. We set it to loop during development to see it clearly. Let's fix that. Go to System State, set loop behavior to once, and set loop duration to something like 3 seconds. Do the same for the emitters, or just make sure life cycle mode is set to system. Right, the looping issue is fixed. Now there's another problem. Decals are affecting dynamite objects and we don't want that. To fix this, open PP pistol bullet, select the mesh, and uncheck receive decal. Then, do the same in BP Wobble Target. Much better. Alright, let's move on to the second step, improving your effect. Start by duplicating the splash effect, and let's rename them. Splash 02 Splash Decay. Now, let's tweak the second emitter to create something different. First, I change the pivot offset to adjust its rotation center. I remove collisions and the event. I add a drag module. I lower the gravity to keep the particles from falling too fast. I increase the initial velocity. I stretch the sprite size to make the splash longer. Oh, and I forgot to change the alignment. I switch to velocity highlines. I also remove the initial random rotation and I shorten the lifetime of the particles. As you can see, the result looks completely different, even though we only change a few parameters. Now, we all three emitter active, it's looking pretty intense maybe too many splashes. I'm going to adjust the spawn rate. For the second emitter, I set random value between 1 and 3. For the first emitter, a value between 3 and 5. That's better. But I will choose a value between 2 and 3 for the second emitter. Perfect! I'm happy with the result. In the final step, I will show you how to add user parameters to easily customize the effect. We will create four parameters, color, size, lifetime, velocity. They are super easy to initialize. I copy and paste the existing color and set one as the default for the others. Then I just replace the color in the emitters with the color parameter. Now. When I modify the parameter, the splash color is updated. Same for the other parameters, I just need to multiply them by the existing values in the corresponding modules.
And that's it. Now you can freely experiment with different looks. I hope you've enjoyed this three-part tutorial series. If you would like to support me, or if you want to use this blood texture, please consider purchasing the asset pack using the link in the description. Thanks again. Don't forget to like and comment, it really helps with the YouTube algorithm. And it means a lot to me personally. See you soon!